Hey everybody, what's up? Back out in Weg's garage here. Uh, hopefully you've been following along on our overdrive rebuild. If you haven't, uh, hit this link right here and uh, start from the beginning because uh, it's been a lot of fun. Fun. Last week we got everything taken apart, we got it all cleaned up. Um, everything is ready to get put back together. And let me tell you, there's a lot of little nuances on putting this thing together. So um, there are all kinds of helpful guides online. There's Elon Yakov's series, which is really good here on YouTube. Uh, I recommend watching that. I got a lot of tips from that. There's the Buckeye Triumphs page, which has some really good guides. Uh, so definitely watch those. We're gonna try and do like a greatest hits here and use all the methods that we've learned from watching those videos and apply them here. Uh, this is not a how-to, but hopefully you can learn something from that. Um, so we're gonna get started putting everything back together. Stay tuned. All right, so we're picking up where we left off last week. Uh, we need to check our float uh, for the planetary uh, gear set here. Um, now there's a lot of different methods that are mentioned online, but since we didn't take a, out the brake ring here, I don't think the the uh, dial indicator method is going to work. So we're going to go with the old method that's specified in the manual, uh, which is to put your spacers in uh, along with an additional spacer, which this has actually had this cut out for us to fit on top of here. Uh, then reassemble the whole thing and measure the distance, resulting distance between the two halves because it won't fit tight back together. And then subtract that from the spacers that are in there and that gives you your float. So we're going to give that a shot. It's not quite as good of a method, but um, it seems like it's probably going to work. So we're going to try that now. <laughs> this is a family program. Attempt one to assemble has kind of failed here. Uh, for some reason, we just can't get the two halves to come together. Uh, and I think it's because it's really hard to get these planet gears engaged in the ring gear uh, on here when that's all assembled. So what we're gonna try and do is, is hold this upright and then lower that down on top. And hopefully that will help everything line up a little bit easier because then all we got to line up is the spline uh, which is a little bit easier. By the way, this is an inch and an eighth wood dowel. Uh, works pretty well for keeping all the washers and everything lined up inside there. So that's our first tip for the day. Inch and an eighth wood dowel. So we have our two halves together. We are kind of struggling, but that wasn't too smart. We actually, because of these parts being kind of a press fit, you have to put the nuts on and really pull everything together. So unfortunately, that'll be a pain to pull back apart. So 
Uh, this is the gap. Uh, let me see if I can get a good picture of that here. This is the gap that we need to measure right there. We put that extra spacer in and it gave us that gap. So we went around with the feeler gauge. Like uh, a lot of other people have found, it's not 100% consistent all the way around, but uh, we basically ended up with two numbers. Uh, we know that gap is between 39 thousandths and 37 thousandths all the way around. So that's got two thousandths error using this method to measure it. Uh, I think there's like six thousandths range available on the actual spacers inside to get everything right. So we can use those numbers, maybe take the average or something and uh, subtract that and find what size spacer we need inside there. So now we gotta take this thing back apart again. So we're gonna do a little bit of math here, real easy stuff. So don't, no worries there. So we're gonna measure, we measure the thickness of our extra spacer washer. Uh, and that is about 74 thousandths. So if we subtract our gap, which I took the average here of 38 thousandths and we get basically what the uh, float is equal to and it's point 036. Now I gotta double check. The service manual says the float is supposed to be 8 to 14 thousandths, but I think that that was updated a little bit later. I'll put the right numbers on the screen here, but basically what we're finding out, either way, this is a way too much float, so we're gonna have to buy a different spacer washer uh, to account for that extra float and get that number within spec. So unfortunately, that is not going to, we, we don't have any extra washers right now, but we will we can now calculate how big that washer needs to be to get it within spec and order the right one because they are like $20 a piece. So you don't want to order 10 different sizes. That's going to add up a little bit. Right, so that's kind of it for what we can do today on the overdrive. I'm just going to show a couple other things that are kind of important here. So the first is that while you can put the this gear in pretty much in any position, there are little dots on here that have to be lined up in the right spot on each of these gears. Let's see if we can get that in the frame. And... The idea is to have all of the little dots on the planet, planet gears go through the center of the sun gear. So you have to kind of fiddle with these uh, planet gears to get them in the right position. So we've got that set here. And then once you get it set, you don't want to let this come out because it is kind of a pain in the rear. But probably not the biggest pain in the rear on this whole project. Uh, another thing, if we look down, so this is the one-way clutch down here. Very easy thing to check here, just to make sure you got this in the right way. It should spin very easily in the counterclockwise direction. Then when you go to turn it clockwise, that should lock up. If you're rebuilding your transmission at the same time you're rebuilding your overdrive, it's always a good idea to do overdrive first because you can use the shaft out of your transmission as your dummy shaft uh, but without a dummy shaft we found we have a couple of paint sticks uh, that happen to fit just perfectly uh, with two of them down inside the splines um, so I think we can use that to line up the splines when we assemble this but 
Here you can again see turns easy that way, does not turn that way. Hey, so that's gonna do it for today. I feel like a little bit of a broken record here. Keep telling everybody that we're gonna have this thing back together next week, but I think next week we'll definitely have the overdrive uh, put back together. We just need that one spacer washer and then we should be able to get everything put back together and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, we do need to look at a few things inside the actual gearbox itself uh, and so we might, might do that here later today or we'll get that in the next video. Hopefully everything's good in there. Uh, fingers crossed. We've had so much good luck so far so I don't know why we'd think this would be any different. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace!